Once again, good evening. Good evening. Police, if you're joining us, you can help us to like from the like button down and try to drop a comment so that I will know who and who are online. Because today we are going to we are going to touch a lot of things on revision. Please, let's just wait one minute to to have uh, people online. If you are joining us on YouTube, you you can help us to like or drop your drop to help us to like. There's a like button on that. Please help us to like and make sure you subscribe. And if you're watching us from Facebook, please go to our YouTube channel, which is Steve Adetela. Subscribe, like, and drop comments. You can drop any 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 question, any question at all. We are available to answer you anytime, any day. Uh, we run through. If you're not live, if you if you're not watching this video live, you can also drop your question or you call us on 620-586-038. And we are available to answer any question you encounter in exam hall what you experience your experience in exam you can even share it with students and in the course of today's teaching i will give room for us to i will permit us to like call in if we have anything we want to share with students or if you have anything we want to we want to we want to pass across or any question we have or any 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 errors we have in exam where on your test, your weekly test, which you think that I need to like assist or help out. Oh, uh, thank you for joining us. If you're joining us, please help us to like the button. You can help us to share. Also, you can call people in there. So today we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about just briefly about sign, and there's a request on conventional road, which I'm going to explain, and I'm going to give room for as many that have. Uh, have different questions to ask, you can call in through 620-586-038. My number is there on the on the platform. Or you drop your comments, your question on the... on the oh, Very good, very good for dropping question number 10 of this today's... today's I, I'm going to treat it. I love that. So I'll come into that to teach questions number 10. The person is asking a question number 10 because what we taught in our school... The test we did today, so I have to do some revision on it and explain quickly. 
And but before I start today, I will appreciate those that are on board. Thank you for coming online today. Uh, but let me just tell you the rudiment of passing the exam. One thing about the exam is that you have to first of all remove fear. When you remove fear to drive or to have a driver's license, you must remove fear. When fear is out of it, the rest is simple. And what makes it simple? One, if you use a material that tallies to the exam, it will be more easier for you. But when you use a material that is far-fetched from exam, you have to struggle more in order to get how they are English or how the other languages are. Even many people does not even know in exam that they have uh, other languages like French, German, English, uh, China. They have it in exam, but they don't know. People thought it's only Spanish. No, they have other languages because in anywhere in Spain, the question is the same. Everywhere in Spain, the question is whether you are on highland or you are on mainland, the question is the same. So we use the same material. We use the right, when you use the right material, it's more easier for you to get what you need easily. And again, we are available online to make it to make to make it easier. We'll explain like I see we are teaching a baby so that you can get it so clear. And we are available that in case you have any question, any errors which you need a teacher to explain to you, we are online to satisfy and to help you. We are based here in Madrid, and and our number twenty four hours is available if you call in or you drop. If you want to be our student, you can call in also to know what it takes to be our student. It's very easy. It's just a step. And when you get it and the means of payment is very simple. So if you're watching this video, you can still be part of us as a student. And if you see that, oh, you are in other school, which, which you are doing it. And the thing is not so getting, it's not good, it's not, not getting clicked. You can also call us. We can assist you and make, and make things okay. If the material you're using is better, we'll tell you. If the material you're using is not right, we'll tell you. So because things are changing and you have to understand that it is possible, you have to pass. You have to have it. It's important. It's important. When fear is out of it, the rest is just to study. If you can create one hour minimum every day to study, I think the sky ooh, is just the springboard. You are just starting and you will get it. You get it. It's very easy. It's very easy when you make it easy. And the only person that can make it easy is you. No teacher can give you 100%. The only teacher, like what teacher can give is just 75%. And the 25% is the research which you're going to do the test and the error. So if you have an error in most of the tests you're doing and you don't ask your teacher the question, it means that you are carrying over. And those questions you did not ask, they are the question that will come up for you in exam. And when they come up for you in exam, you're not confident with it. So it is very, very important for you to ask questions. Ask questions. That is why we create this Friday live on YouTube to solve problems, to solve as much problem as possible, which we can do. So today, before I go, I start picking up questions. I'm going to explain what is all about the sign, which we did. The sign is on chapter 8 of our book which most of us understand very well. We're on the sign uh, from Monday and we are able to finish it up. And today I'm going to, I'm just going to explain briefly what the sign is all about just to perfect the whole thing with all the students. Now, what is the purpose of the sign? What is the purpose of the sign? Remember that sign is something you must observe. You must observe it on the roadway. You must, you must respect it on the roadway if you want to, you want to get a theory. There's something we call road sign and there's something we call the, the traffic rules. The rules are the laws, but the signs are the symbols which you have to you have to honor. Now, how does the sign go? The sign, the sign, the sign has a priority. We have five signs. Five signs. Signs are groups into five, into five, and they have order of priority among them. Order of priority. How does they go? Order of priority means that the way they they they, they are bigger than each other, they respect themselves according to the way they are aligned. You can't just call sign from the middle or you call sign from below. You have to understand this according to the priority among them. That is why if you go to exam, you are not able to recite sign according to priority. You are tend to fill three. You are tend to fill three questions because there's no how you go to exam, you will not see sign. Sometimes people go to exam and they see like 15 questions that has to go to sign. That's good in sign. And most time now you are not having, what does this sign mean? What does this sign mean? It's not as simple as that. It's so logical to the extent that you must understand the rudiment of sign in order to get it clear. So you have to understand what it takes to be 
to, for that sign to be like that. Now, the sign gave birth to five children, which I told you, and I'm going to explain to you. Look at this. If you look at this very well, you will see here, I explained five signs, five signs here. Now, we have the first one is the traffic agent. The second one is circumstantial or warning sign. The third one is the traffic light, which are always circular. The fourth one is the vertical sign. And the fifth one are the road markings. Now, this is the priority among them. When number one is talking, the rest has to keep quiet. When number two is talking, the number three, four, five has to keep quiet. When number three is talking, number four and number five has to keep quiet. When number four is talking, number five has to keep quiet, which means there's order of respect among them. And sometimes when the sign of the same kind, number one, number one, same kind, contradict or conflict themselves, you obey the most restrictive among them. But when sign of different kind contradict, like a police asks you to stop, and a green light shows to go. Green light is under number three, so and police is number one. So number one will go because there's order of priority. So when a sign of different kind comes on board and they contradict themselves, different kind, you obey the order of priority among them. But when sign of the same kind happens to contradict each other, you obey the most restrictive among them. Now, sign, which I explained, the, the first one, which is a traffic, which is a traffic officer, the police officer. Police officer has way of expressing their sign, which can be sign you can see, which are with arm or light, or sign you can hear, which are with weasel. And remember that what are the way they place their hand? Police can make their hand vertical, vertical. Vertical means that they are obligating all the road users approaching them, approaching the police, approaching the agent to stop. So when they make it horizontal, whether one arm or two arms, it means that they are telling you that all the road users are approaching the agent from the both directions should stop, whether from the back or from the front. When the police is moving his hand up and down, moving his arm up and down, means that you have to reduce speed. You reduce speed, just like the way you want to tell someone to reduce speed. Now, when police hold on to a back on, a back on can be a red light or green light or yellow light or it does not even have light. Maybe wood is only something. It's, and it's waving it means that you have to reduce speed on the roadway. Now, police, sometimes they have flag on their vehicle. Their vehicle can be maybe motorcycle or they are driving an animal like horse or they are having their car with, you, with them and they put flag. When they have a color flag that is red, means that the road is temporarily closed to traffic. When they remove the red flag and they put green, means that the road is reopened to traffic. When they remove the green and they put yellow, means that the road is neither open nor closed, but you have to use the road with extremely caution. So you have to understand that. Now, when police have, they are on top of their bike and they put their hand downward inclined, or they are like flashing the, 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 the light behind you. It means that they are instructing you to park to the right side. You don't park to the left. You have to park to the right side. So that is everything you need to know about police. And there's no how you go to the exam, you know, I told you, which you won't experience question on the sign. Now, the second one are the circumstantial traffic signs. Circumstantial traffic sign or warning sign. They come on the roadway by due to emergency or due to construction work on the roadway. They can be a barrier fixed or they can be a movable barrier something that moves that opens maybe because of due to payment or automatic way of opening so we have that well and we have some other things which are this look if you look at this very well this this is what we call permanent direction board permanent direction board is always found on the edge on the on the bend of a road bend of a road is white and blue you know we have one that is red and white the red and white is called temporary direction board that one is found on the construction area just pointed to a direction which you have to follow but the blue is found on every bend which is permanently placed and is telling you how dangerous the bend is so which means if you have it one just one it means that the bend is moderate if you have it two it means the bend is average or medium if you have it three means the bend in that area, the danger of that bend is high. Now, we have what we call the vertex divider. Vertex divider is always found on a road wheel that divided into two. So you have the road divided into two, and it means that the, the, you can follow left or you follow right. So we have the hedge marker post also, the hedge marker post, which you are seeing here, 
the egg marker post, and we have the cones on the roadway. The cones, we have the other kind of reflective gadgets which are placed on the roadway. In exam, it comes up, what is the importance of cone on the roadway? The importance of cone or any gadget that are placed to demarcate the road is that they form an imaginary line which you must not cross. The imaginary line which you must give way to, which means they can block a lane and tell you that this lane should not be used, that you use the other lane to that, to that direction. So that is that is what we know about the, com the circumstantia or warning sign, which is number two hierarchy. Number three is the traffic light. Remember, the traffic light can be of different color. This is the traffic light we talk about. Look at the traffic light. The traffic light can be red. The traffic light can be yellow. The traffic light can be green. Now, traffic lights, all what we are saying about traffic light is that traffic light can be intermittent. Intermittent means that it's flashing. It's flashing. Non-intermittent means that it's steady. It's not flashing. So the red light that is flashing or non-flashing means stop. Yellow lights is where we have some problem. When it's flashing, it's telling you go with caution. But when it's not flashing, it means stop like the red light. The green, whether flashing or not flashing, means go. So we have to understand that. And we have some kind of light, arrows, arrows on the light. It's the same application, whether you could the color. But the arrow is just telling you the direction which they are signifying their intention. So you have to understand that. Look at this. When you look at it, this is what we call the square shape, the square or the lane light. The lane light is found on top of the lane. Now, what is it doing? It's telling you the direction you have to follow. When you are seeing this on your lane, means that the lane which you have to use. When you find yourself on the X lane facing you, means that that lane is not meant for you. The lane is meant for the other person coming from the other side of the road. So, which means you have to change as soon as possible to the where the green is. When you have the oblique yellow or white, means that change your lane to the where the green is also. So, we have some other lights which are reserved for bicycle. When you see the bicycle light, light, it means that it's controlling bicycle and mope, not motorcycle. Bicycle and mope. Mope is a scooter. Now, the other one is pedestrian light, which we all know when we are crossing uh, the, the, the traffic light. The pedestrian light, when it shows green, you cross. When the pedestrian light shows uh, uh, red, you stop. Like the Now, we have the other one, which is called sweating light, which is a light that is a white stripes light. Look at this. A white stripes light. A white stripes light is a light that is meant for buses and tram. It controls only buses and tram. It does not control you as a private car owner. So when it's horizontal, it means that buses and tram should stop. When it's vertical, it means buses and tram should go. When it's land to the left or to the right, it means buses and tram should pass the direction that that our line is pointing at. When it's blinking, means the same thing as a red light, which means they have to stop. So that light in exam controls only buses and tram. So that is that is the traffic light number third hierarchy. Remember, I told you I want you to go with me. What are five signs? Number one is what police officer. Number two is what circumstantial or warning sign. Number three is what traffic light. Now number four is the vertical sign. Number four, vertical sign. Now, why do they call it vertical sign? Because it's on a pole. Now, some because of the technology, some are placed on the screen on the highway, which you see that they post it on the screen and it comes and is and everybody's like, oh wow, now I'm able to read what the and how did you read it? You read it according to the symbol, the side, the symbol, the shape which you have on it, and the color. The color and the shape has meaning so much when it comes to traffic law. Colors and shape as meaning. And that is where you have different kind of triangle like this. Red triangles. The red triangles that faces up are always danger. 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 Danger to what? Danger to whatever that is drawn inside. So if you see my picture in a triangle red, it means that danger due to Steve. Danger due to King. Danger due to IT. Danger due to Johannes. Danger due to Solo. You understand me? That is danger due to whatever that is inside. So what you need to know in exam is that the picture which connects that, that the, the, the danger they are talking about, which is very, very important. That is why every student needs to like ask questions when you see any sign because you don't know the sign that will come for you in exam. 
No, that because one thing you have to understand, like somebody asked me yesterday night that look, I, with all this like 2,000 questions, um, uh, why am I studying 2,000 questions when I know that I'm going to face 30 questions in the exam? I said, good, because if you're in that exam hall, if you are 100, no one will do the same question. Everybody will have different 30. That is why the question will roll for different people. So we don't know the one that is their own 30. We don't know the one that is Mr. B30. So everybody has to run the whole thing so that you get it clear. Now, when you have the triangle red, danger, I told you. Now, where, where you still have triangle red, they are all danger due to whatever that is drawn inside. And later we have the circular, the circular red, the circular red. What are the circular red? The circular red is explaining to you prohibition or restriction. It's restricting whatever that is inside it. Prohib it's prohibiting what is inside it. So if you have, for example, you have car like this, the car, connotes signify automobile, motor vehicle. So which means prohibition for motor vehicle in that area. But remember that motorcycle can use this place. So, but look at this. Prohibition for motorcycle, prohibition for goods vehicle, prohibition for goods vehicle with a tone, which means a maximum kilo is placed in there. Prohibition for hazardous material, prohibition for any inflammable or explosive material, prohibition for water polluted material that is more than 1,000 liters. Now, prohibition, prohibition, restriction, restriction is secular rate. So the opposite of secular rate is the secular blue. Secular blue. What a secular blue means? Obligation. It obligates you that obligation for motorcycle, obligation for motor, uh, motor, mo, mo, motor vehicle, which is automobile, except motorcycle. Now, obligation for bicycle, obligation for bicycle, obligation for mope, your obligation for goods vehicle. So is obligating, obligating, obligating. The secular blue is obligating. And when a sign is being crossed, end of that restriction end of the restriction so we have what we call the square blue or rectangular blue square blue or rectangular blue they are her recommendation recommending what are they recommending they are recommending that this road is this this road is that this road is this so when you have the square blue or rectangular blue it is recommending for you and the last part of the of the of the road markings which of the of the sign is the road marking now, the fifth hierarchy road markings. And remember that the one of the major things that fail people in exam in practical is the road marking because they ignore its law. They ignore, they disrespect it on the roadway when they are doing practical. And remember, when you have a solid line, a solid line means a line that is continuous. A solid line means that you can't cross. You can't cross. When you, whether it's two or whether it's one, like what you have here, whether it's two or whether it's one. So you cannot cross. You have to keep to your lane. When you have it broken, a broken line means this continuous line. You can overtake, but remember that you cannot drive on any line. You have to respect. When you have it yellow, yellow zigzag, you cannot park, but you can stop. It can also be for a bus stop. It can be for loading and offloading. When you have a yellow broken, that area you can stop, you can park. But when you have it on solid line, yellow, you cannot park and you cannot stop. So, and think that is everything, the summary of sign. Now I'm going to explain because one of my students requested for me to explain the conventional road. Remember, when we're talking about conventional road, we are talking about road itself. I told us that road is being grouped into two. We have road groups into two and the road groups into two are road inside town and the road outside town. Now, the road inside town are the road which is found where you live, where you reside, like the urban area, urban road. In that urban road, you have your streets and you have your major road, which is your urban road, where the urban buses, routes. Now, apart from that, you have road outside town. So if you are going outside town, you have a road that are outside town, which in Africa, we call it express. But here we call it highway. We call it highway or interurban, interurban, outside urban. So when you are joining the road outside urban, remember that you have a sign like this. Let me just show you because it comes in exam. A sign, this sign, this sign shows that you are going, you are joining a road outside town. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this now. This is you are leaving a built up area to join road outside town. You are entering into a built-up area when you say this. 
So a white panel with red around it means you are entering into a built-up area. A red crossed it means that bye-bye to the built-up area. You are joining a road outside built-up area. Now, I'm now telling you we have four roads outside built-up area, four highways, four in Tahoban. So when they ask you a question in the exam about highway, what you need to understand is this four highway. Now, the first one is the motorway. The second one is the dual carriageway. The third one is the highway for automobile. And the fourth one is the conventional road. The first one, which is the motorway, is called autopista in Spanish. It has a symbol, which the symbol is this. Look at the symbol. The symbol is this. Autopista, which is motorway. The beginning and the end of it. The second one is dual carriageway. It has a symbol. They put autovia inside it. Beginning and the end of it. Because every road where you join it becomes your beginning. And where you where you live in it becomes the hang. Now the third one is called the highway for automobile. This is it, highway for automobile. Remember, I told you before that when you have a car diagram, it means an automobile. So highway for automobile, the beginning and the end of it. Remember that the maximum speed in that area is 100. The for the motorway and dual carriageway, the maximum speed is 120. Now the conventional road does not have a symbol like that. So the conventional road becomes they are of two. Because according to their speed, we have the conventional road of 90 and we have the conventional road of 100. And that is the only road with highway for automobile where you can borrow 20 in order to overtake when the person, the car ahead of you is not doing up to the maximum speed of that road. So you have to first of all detect the maximum speed of that road before you can borrow 20 to have to the maximum speed in order to overtake. So if a question comes in the exam and says, what is the maximum speed you can use to overtake on this conventional road? The first thing you should ask yourself is that, is the vehicle ahead of you doing the maximum speed? If no, then you have to discover which of the conventional road, which one, is it 100 or 90? If it's 90, you borrow 20 to have to 90, make it 110. If it's one, if it's hundred, you borrow twenty to have to hundred, making one twenty. So, but if the question says the person ahead of you is doing ninety already, or is doing hundred already, and the road is hundred, so you can't borrow twenty again. You have to continue going in that in that in that setting. So that is that. So how can I differentiate the two conventional roads? One is the arch shoulder. Arch shoulder is the side of the road which everyone park in your built up area. At shoulder, at shoulder. Now, at shoulder of 1.5 meters wide or more, wide or more, which means that at shoulder that is one to 1.5 meters contain a car. But when a hard shoulder is less than 1.5, it does not take a car. So you have to first of all identify that the hard shoulder is it up to 1.5 or the hard shoulder is it less than 1.5. So if the hard shoulder is up to 1.5, means that the conventional road is 100. But if it's less than 1.5, means that the conventional road is 90 or if you have two lane in any direction of traffic two lane whether going or two lane coming making total of three it means that the conventional road is still 100 or if you have only one lane going one lane coming and without at shoulder at shoulder up to 1.5 the conventional road is still 90 that is everything you need to know about conventional road in the state now let me go into the today's test the revision test which we 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 are, we are about to go now uh, let me start from the um uh madam joanne says question number 10 question number 10 on that yesterday test question number 10 on the yesterday's test is the yesterday test happens to be this this one i want to read please if i read it and you are not clear let me know ask me to explain if i'm clear thump up Please, if you are joining us, try to like, put a like button, thump up to like button, thump up to like button, and also drop comments so that I will know that you are online. Now, if I answer your question and it's clear to you, please try to thump up or you comment for me to know that you are clear. If you are not clear, if you don't comment, it means that I have to keep explaining until you get it because the operation until you get it is what why we come on board like this. And you can also call in through 620 038. The line is uh, open for anybody. You can call it through WhatsApp call or you call it through direct call. I'm going to explain more or you're going to ask me if I'm, I'm okay with it. Now, the number 10 of that question which you are talking about is, is this. It says, when driving in snow or ice, is it, uh, it is advisable to drive AC, 
breaking hard on bend. No, you don't break hard on bend in snow. But when you break hard, the car, the tire will slip. Number two, using the highest gear possible. Number three, using the lowest gear possible. Look, when it comes to this, where the bib is the answer. But let me just explain those something for you about about the lowest gear, highest gear. What is the highest gear possible? Highest gear possible means gear two and three. G highest gear possible. Gear two and three, not gear five, not gear six. Because when it comes to snow, if you use the lowest gear, which is gear one, your wheel will be turning in the snow and you will not have a good gripping. So you drive, you start to drive with gear two or three, if possible, because you need power and you need speed to be able to move. Remember that the lesser you go, the more powerful the, the gear is. The higher you go, the speed it is and lesser power. So use highest gear possible, which is gear two or three. That is why the answer is like that. So, uh, Sister Joanne, uh, Joannes, I think, uh, are you clear with the, the question? If you're online, please uh, put thumb up. Let me see. Are you clear with it? Highest gear possible is gear two or three. So that is what you use in snow to drive. Are you are you clear? If you're clear with it, number, let me go to King Solo. King Solo said question two, question two and question 13 of this morning's test. Question two, question two says, question two says, in a mini minivan, is a minivan only carrying a driver permitted to drive in an HOV lane? HOV lane is a kind of restricted lane which has a law that has a law that governs it. Now, what are the law? The law is this, that you cannot be alone in the car to use that lane. You have to be at least two to use that lane. And the only person that can be alone is when you have an handicap sticker on your vehicle. So that lane is always reserved. It can also be a bus lane. It's always reserved for certain vehicle at a particular time when they, when they, are, when they, are, when they are to use it. But when you're alone in your car, you can't. So that was why the right answer say, say whether minivan or a car. Yes, if you have the disabled person sign, the disabled person sign is the me is the handicap sticker which you have behind your vehicle. So with the handicap sticker, you can use the road. This question is coming exam, and if you don't get it clear, you will you will. So yes, so far he is driving with a disabled sign. Very good, a disabled sign, which is the handicap sign. Please, we can we can we can chat up also if you if you can. Now number thirteen on kiss number thirteen number thirteen. Of that question, number 13 says, number 13 says, if your vehicle has passed its first MOT, when does it have to pass the second inspection? Listen, uh, remember that I always tell people I'm not just answering questions. I have to use the question to explain likely question in exam. Now, how does it go? Uh, I MOT or high TV start counting from the first registration. That is when you buy a car, tier rubber, new car, you go to a place where the showroom, they get an ITV for you, which is four years, four years. The first ITV is four years. So anybody that gets a car new, what the high TV is the road worldliness. That is the, that car is durable, durable to be used on the public road. It's not an insurance. Is just telling you that this vehicle is good, guarantee to be used mechanically on the roadway. Now, technically, the car is good for 10 years. Now, after four years, you have two years good. After four years, you have two years. After the sec first two years, you have another two years. After the second two years, you have another two years. After that, the third two years, you start having one one year until the car is packed up. So, which means if you are had an exam, what is the first ITV? Four years. What is the second ITV? Two years. Two years. So two years. If they said, if the car is 10 years old, remember that four, two, six, two, eight, two, ten. If the car is above 10 years, how many years ITV will you, or will you have? One, one year. So after 10 years old of the car from the first registration, you will start having one, one year. Now, ITV start counting from the first registration, not manufacturing dates, not production dates. So if you are joining, please, 
Uh, like, please try to like the button. Help us to like the video. Like the button down. Look at the button. Look at the down. You see a thumb up. Please thumb up for it. You are, we are more than the number of people that thumb up. Please try to thumb up. Don't just watch the video. Don't be online without thumping up. Try to thumb up, thumb up for us. Thumb up and share if possible. If you can share, share with someone so that they can get it. Please thumb up, thumb up. We only have five people that thumb up, thumb up. Please thumb up. Now number number number. I think number thirteen is solved from um, King Solo. Number number ten from Mister Oscar. Said number ten. But looking at it after the correction, I now understand it better. Yes, you now understand it better. But let me just explain because of other people that are okay. Okay, very good. So it's one of the questions that I've, uh, I, I explained before, which is which has to do with the uh, highest GR possible and the lowest GR. So what number do we have? We must uh, we must use the highest GR possible. Very good. Yes. Uh, so far, driving with disabled. Number nineteen. Number nineteen. Mister Juan, say number nineteen, please. Let's let's try to bring out question. Bring out question. You can call in. Six two zero five eight six zero three eight. You are yourself. So number number say number nineteen. Number nineteen. Number nineteen here. Number nineteen here says says if it is raining, what should you pay special attention to if you are driving a motorcycle when it's raining? When it's raining, what must you pay special attention to when you are riding a motorcycle? Look, is the road marking? The road marking on the ground should be what you should pay special attention to when you are riding a motorcycle because they are slippery. When you climb on them, the line, they will slip you as a motorcycle person because remember that motorcycle is fragile and it's not stable because of two wheels. So if you are not careful, down in rain, you go and mount on the line on the road marking, you will slip off. Are, 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 are you clear, Sister Joanne? Please try to thump up if you're clear with what, I, what I'm explaining. Number 19 is of okay. it. Now, somebody said number two. King Solo said number two. Number two, number two, number two, number two, number two. Number two, I've explained it before, and I said the HOV has a restriction that you cannot drive your car alone if you are on the, on the, on the lane. You must be more than one, well, at least two. But when you have a disabled sticker, you have to. You can use it alone. So with a disabled person, which is an handicap, you can use it. Mini van means a kind of uh, this mini mini kind of uh, a, a kind of private car that that can take more than several people. You understand me? So that is what we are talking. Now number number thirteen. I think I've explained it. Number thirteen. Number thirteen. Number thirteen. Number thirteen. Yes, I explained number thirteen. I said the Hemboti, the uh, second one with two years, two years. Now the road marking because it is slippery. Good. Clear, 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 clear. Please, any other question? Any other question from anyone? We are, please bring up question. We are doing revision. Bring up question number 20. Number, it might be from the book. It might be from the book which we teach. You can call my attention to any subheading for me to re-explain. Subheading to re-explain. Number 20 of that question. Number 20. Number 20, very good. Number 20 here says... That is just what I just thought when I was teaching the, the conventional road. Now, I said, you are driving with your private car on this road with hard shoulder narrower than narrower than 1.5. That means the hard shoulder is narrower than 1.5. What is the maximum speed permitted? Look at the picture we are talking about here. Look at the picture. Look at the picture. It means you are driving on this road and the hard shoulder is lesser lesser than 1.5. So automatically, 90 km per hour is the, is the speed because it has no hard shoulder that is enough to be called the one of 100 because it has to be hard shoulder of 1.5 meters wide or more before that road can be considered as 100 km per hour. But when that road has a hard shoulder that is less than 1.5, it means that it's not considered as a standard at shoulder. Remember that this issue of at shoulder is only applicable to conventional road. Many people, when they go to exam, they have problem. They they go they start imagining at shoulder to motorway, dual carriageway, and highway for automobile. No, those ones no. The at shoulder stuff is only meant for conventional road. Number twenty five. Number twenty five says. Number twenty five of the of the test says. 
says, if you place your abdominal stripes of the seed belt over your abdomen, abdomen stripes, you know, look, when we have a seat belt, when you enter a car, you realize, Sister Johannes, are you watching me? Are you watching me? Please, if you're watching me, just say yes. Are you watching me? Because I want to explain. If you enter your private car, or somebody carried you with a car, you put on seat belt, one belt passes like this, and the other one passes through your pelvic. Pelvic. Pelvic is where people put belts. Men put belts. You know, women do fashion and they put belts on top of the stomach. But men put belt on the pelvic side. Now, where the belt pass, the lower part of the seat belt is the pelvic part. It should not be on the stomach. When you put it on the stomach, imagine that you just end, you just ate a full pounded yam, good pounded yam with with assorted meats. You understand me? From an African dish, dishes shop, and you now put the belt wrongly on your tummy. So if there's an if there's a kind of accident or a collision. The belt will tighten your tummy and there will be an injury on the tummy which can make you to even vomit out from you. So, so in that case, you should understand that when the, the abdomen stripe of the seat belt is improper placed, it's not placed rightly, what will happen here is that this will cause serious internal injury during accidents. It will cause internal injury. So just like when they said the, the shoulder stripes too, if you place it on the neck, the belt just passed through. Let me just let me just show us something like this. Now imagine that this is a seat belt. This is a seat belt. Instead of a seat belt to pass through the collarbone, the seat belt you put it on the neck. When an accident happens, it draws your neck. Are you getting me? Just like the same on the stomach. You put it on the stomach and it tights you. It's it causes problem. Are you get Are you getting me? Are, are you Are you clear with it? Are you thump up if you're clear with it? So that is number twenty five. Number thirty of that question. Number 30 of that question says, in the event of contradiction between sign of the same type, which one has priority? Sign of the same type. In the starting of this lecture today, I tried to run the topic of sign to just to, 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 to like fine tune what we did during the week in the class online. And I explained to us that signs has hierarchy and we have priority. Sign of the same kind means that the same sign, like in the picture, in the picture here, you have these two signs. These two signs, this one that says no parking, but you can stop. And this one under I say no parking, no stopping. So two of them contradict themselves. I must obey the most restrictive. The most restrictive is no parking, no stopping, because it restricts me more. Because they are the sign of the same kind. What class of sign? Vertical sign. They are number four sign. Vertical sign in that area. You said number, somebody say, um, number 16. Number 16. Let me just, before I come back to your number 28, let me just take number 16 according to the way we, we put it online. Number, no, somebody, somebody posted number, sorry, number, number 20 was up. I, I think I've, I've answered that. Number 25, number 25, somebody said number 25, I've answered it. Number 30. Now, over is overtaking speed on conventional road. Yeah, sir, madam, I explained overtaking speed uh, before I've taken conventional road before you come on, on board, which means after the video, you can still rewatch the video. And again, let me just explain now. On conventional road, we have the one of 100 and we have the one of 90. I can borrow 20 to add to 100, make it 110 to overtake. I can borrow 20 to half to 90 in order to overtake, making 110. But the condition is this. The condition, the condition is that if the person in the in uh, 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 driving in my front is doing the maximum speed of that road, I cannot borrow 20. But if the person is doing less than the maximum speed, I can borrow 20. Some question in exam will tell you the speed the person is doing already. Or some question in exam will not tell you the speed. So if the question is straight and says, what is the maximum speed you can use to overtake? Or what is the maximum speed you can use to pass? It's the same thing. So if the question does not talk about the person is doing the maximum speed, it means that you have to just state it. But if the question shows, just like what you met in the class today, the one that I explained this morning in the class online, is that 
the question one says the person is doing 90 km per hour and 90 km per hour is the maximum speed of that road already. So in that case, I cannot overtake because when the person is doing, I want you to take your manual, take your manual, which we use in class. I want you, if you are there, please everybody take the manual and go to, let's go to, let's go to, let's go to subheading 54. Subheading 54. Just please, subheading 54. 54, chapter 2, speed. Somebody, if you are there, just put thumb up and say I because we are teaching. This is a this is this is an avenue to teach, please. We are teaching, we are teaching, please. Remember. So if you are there, if you are there, let your book, let let the book be closer to you now. If you're there, are you there? Good, you're there. Very good. IT, you're good. Then now this subheading um of 54 explain about the conventional road. Now what are we talking about 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 this conventional road here? Look at it. I want to read and I want to explain. He said, cases in which I can exceed the generic speed by 20 km per hour in order to overtake. I want you to underline that, please. In order to overtake. That means without overtaking, you can't borrow 20. So in exam, if they just ask you, what is the maximum speed of this road? You have to, you can't go to exam without under, without not understanding different between the two conventional roads. It's very, very important. You have to understand it because conventional road, the one with hard shoulder more than 1.5 meter is 100. The one less than 1.5 meter is 90. The one that has two lane in any direction of traffic is 100. The one that is one lane going, one lane coming with no hard shoulder is 90. <coughs> Good. Now, this place explained to us that you can only borrow 20. Listen, listen. You can only borrow 20 only to overtake. Now, one, on all conventional road, whether the one of 90 or the one of 100 intended for motor vehicle, which is your private car and motorcycle only. For lorry, for car that is towing a light trailer, no. Only for your private car and motorcycle. Now, mixed vehicle, no. In case you're asking an exam, can mixed vehicle add 20 to overtake? Please don't make that mistake. Many people go to exam and they fill that question that says, with me or with, with mixed vehicle, can you add 20 to overtake? No, mixed vehicle is on the second group in speed. So only the first group, which is private car and motorcycle, can borrow 20. Now, number third point says, when the car ahead is going at a speed less than the maximum speed for that road. So if do you know the road, that this road, conventional road is 90, this conventional road is 90, and the person at the front is doing 90, how can I know? I know through my speedometer gauge. The person who's doing 90 is doing the maximum speed of that road I can overtake. So if a question says, can you overtake when the person is doing 90 on this road, and you know that the road is 90, you cannot overtake. Or on the road that is 100, the person is doing 100, you cannot overtake. But if the person is doing lesser than the maximum speed of that road, you can now overtake. You can now add 20 to the generic speed in order to overtake on that road. Good. I think it's clear to that extent. Now, uh, uh, Madam Midred, is it clear? Please thump up if it's clear. If you're clear with my explanation, please, because I don't stop until you get it. I don't stop until you get it, please. Please, thank you. Now, number, somebody requested for number 28. Sister Joannes, I appreciate you today for making it lively, please. Please, we will, 28. 28 of the question says, 28 of the question says, is it prohibited to stop or park on a change of level? Change of level, change of level. To stop or park on a change of level. Look, sometimes if you look at your vicinity in your area, there are cars that park or stop on some vicinity like that. But the reason is that they stopped because they have a clear visibility. If you go and stop on that kind of road where there's no clear visibility, another car comes and eats you. Insurance will not pay you. So in that area... They said, is it prohibited to stop? It's no, it's not prohibited. But in a case, in a, in a case where you have this visibility, it's not right. 
except where you are with visibility. Now, be careful in exam when they have some theory. Uh, you know, sometimes this book we are teaching this driving school uh, theory is complicating and is, is somehow funny sometimes because the same theory will tell you yes. The same theory will tell you no. Why did it tell you yes and why did it tell you no? The reason why it's trying to tell you yes is because there's what we call generic law. Generic law. And why is telling you no? Because there's something we call specific law. Now, just like now, on a normal way, on a normal change of gradient road, according to generic law, because it might not have a visibility, I don't need to park for safety. But if the visibility is clear, I can see, I can park and stop. You understand me? So that is, that is, that just like now, a question comes in exam and says, can you overtake in a tunnel? Can you overtake in a tunnel? Generally, no. But exceptionally, yes, if I have two lanes in my direction without invading the oncoming lane. Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you getting me? The, is anybody on, is anybody, is anybody, is anybody understand what I'm explaining, please? Let's flow. Understand what I'm saying, please. Uh, try to let me know. Comment, comment, write, and please like the button. Like, put a like button. Put a like button when you join us. Subscribe. Don't watch us free. If you're watching us from Facebook, also, please because we share it on Facebook. Please try to like button, comment, or you call on six two zero five eight six zero three eight. If you cannot write, or no, you can call in to ask your question through WhatsApp call or through. True, because the purpose of me coming on video like this on YouTube every Friday is this is is personally for my students, uh, but just to solve your problem before you go to exam. So it's very, very important. I don't I don't have this restricted time to it. I don't have it might be more than one hour, it might be more than 30 minutes. It depends on when you ask question. Please bring up your question if you have some places in the book, some heading in the book that you need me to explain. That is why we we, we try to collate many questions. Uh, I create this platform for us to have. I can't be to everybody's house. Uh, so this is a means of connecting everybody so that you can be able to, you can be able to get it. Thank you very much. I think, Sister Johan, I think you are you are from Las Pama. Yes, Las Pama. Thank you very much. That's that's the distance. A student from Las Pama is with us and, and you know, is that, so please, any other question from anybody? Because if there's no question, I will call it a day. But if there are questions, I continue. Even if it's going to take me four hours, I continue. So, so that's it. So it's very, very important before you go to exam to understand the rudiment between the two conventional road. And because when you are when you don't get it clear and you get to exam, you are you're seeing it different. So you just have to understand it that one conventional road, this, the other one is this. So any other question, please, sir. Can you explain more about reaction time? Good. What is the reaction time? Sorry, come here. Good. What, what is reaction time? Good. You know, when we say reaction time, reaction. Good. You slap me, I react back, I slap you, sister fully. Good. I react back. That is the reaction to you. Now, when you are driving, now I'm placing on driving. When you're driving, you're moving your car. The car, you're on a speed and you're going. And you get to a certain period, you noticed an obstacle, or let me just refer it to a red light. Just to read the red light. Since you are cruising with a pedal of tortu, there's a particular time you want to react to that light. You remove your leg from the tortu to put it on top of brake. Now, removing your leg from that tortu to move the car, intending to stop, to brake, you have not started pressing brake. You only change your leg it means reacting. You are reacting. Reaction, the time you react is what we call the reaction time. That is the time you react to that thing. Removing your leg from the tortu to place it on top of brake means react. Now, let me now define it normal. What is reaction time? Reaction time is the time that passes from the moment I perceive, I receive a stimulus, a stimulus, and I react. I react to it. Removing my leg, I receive that stimulus. I receive, I see an obstacle and I tend to react to it. Get me? So that is reaction time. Time. And remember that during that reaction time, the car is still moving. 
which means you cover what we call reaction distance. That is the distance you cover during reaction time. What is breaking distance? Breaking distance is the distance from the moment you start to apply the brake until the car stop. Now, a caller, please let me just pick a caller. Uh, good evening, sir. Hello, good evening, sir. You are live. You have so many questions. Let's take it. Let's take it just one after the other. Okay, like test two. Test two. Which of the test two? Number two question of test. Number, number two. That is the, our test book. That is the, uh, number two. Our test. Our test book. That is test two. Which of the which of the test which of the test book that bigger one the test. Oh, okay, I don't, I don't. If you, if you, are, if you are asking, I don't, I don't, I didn't prepare for that. I don't have it with me here, so I'm not able to. Oh. You understand me? I have okay, to. Okay. Let me, let me order for it. Don't worry. Okay. Let me order for it. Wait, okay. just one, just one minute, one minute. Ah, please. Okay, sir. Please help me bring the test, the test manual, the test manual, big test manual. On the test manual, new one. Please, sorry, sir. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't. Is it this? Is it this? Yes, sir. Is the is it big, the big one? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I'm. Yes, I'm showing you now. What number? Wait, wait, sir. Wait, just wait. Test two. Test two. Are you talking about are you talking about are you watching me live? Test two. Are you talking about test two? Because other people have to benefit from what you are what you are. Test two. Is that not so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Test two. Wait. Hello, sir. Wait. Okay. Test two. Test two. I'm writing it down. Sorry. Test two. Number 15 and what? Yeah. And number number 15, number 6. Number 6. And 28. And 28. You know yeah. what? Let me let me let me let me solve this three first. If we finish, you can still call in again. You understand me? Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Good. Oh, the caller said, "Oh, we should treat something from this." Remember that I told us that we are doing revision, and this is part of the material which I give to you. The test number two. If you are having it, test number two, number six, number six of it first. Number six, number six. Test number two, number six. Number six says the cost of police and firemen. Or of insurance management and service are called, are called. You know, I explained to us that during accident, there are different costs. When somebody is dead, is human cost. Death is human cost. Ambulance coming there is sanitary cost, which is also at cost. But when the cost of police and fire service is called administrative cost, that one is just straight. Administrative cost. Number 15. Number 15. Say so number 15. Number 15. Number 15 in that place says, number 15 says, a traffic light with green arrow means that the vehicle can move in, can move in one. The direction of the arrow and have priority at the intersection. The direction of the arrow yielding way to the vehicle traveling on the coast. Good, very good. This question, remember that the, 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 there's a red light. There's a red light for anybody at the junction. So which means they don't have priority at that junction. But because the arrow is showing that going to the right, when you are entering the junction to go to your right, you don't have priority over the person who owns the junction because you are only permitted to go to the right. 
So you have to yield way to the people in the junction. That is why the answer will be B. Good. Number 28. Number 28 of the same place. 28 of that same test. 28. 28. 28 says, It is mandatory to leave a frontal clearance behind the vehicle in the front to allow someone else to pass on a road on on road with one lane in each direction on interurban road good good the frontal clearance here is the front space which you give to the vehicle in your front frontal that is safety safety kind of uh, distance which we keep i explained that in the class yesterday and i told us that that it is mandatory to leave the frontal clearance to us um the vehicle behind in front to allow someone else to pass on the one way on the one on the road with one lane which means if the person wants to overtake you for example from behind now because you keep frontal clearance the person will be able to do it and come back to the right so the the a here will be better according to this a will be better in this place according to this that is the three question to this three question to this sir so I think I solved it so that let's just make it snappy, snappy, snappy like that so that we can touch, we can touch the whole, the whole. If there's any question, you can still call it. Another question on board says, listen, thank you. Uh, uh, please, sir, can you explain more about reaction time? I've explained that. Now, question number 12, 12, question 12, sorry. Question 12 on that same place. Question 12. Question 12 says, Question 12 says, Animal can walk. Animal can walk on all road except motorway and highway. Animal cannot walk on highway. Animal cannot walk on motorway and dual carriageway and highway for automobile. But animal can be found on conventional road and can be found in urban road. So in this question, they are just asking you, where can animal walk? But remember that it's against the law for animal to be found on a motorway, which is autopista, on a dual carriageway, which is autovia, on highway for automobile, which is motorway, highway. So they can be found only on conventional road or urban road. Number, number 15. Number 15 says, number 15 says, are stickers allow on the windscreen of a private car? Are stickers allow on the windscreen of a private car? What is the sticker? The sticker is this, this kind of uh, adhesive which you put on the windscreen to like make it tinted. You want to tint it. Good. If you are tinting it, remember that you must be able to have two mirrors, two external mirrors. It's yes, whether the road is clearly visible to the driver. How is it clearly visible? Clearly visible to the driver with the help of the two mirror, the two external mirror, because you might not have a clear picture through the rear view mirror in that area. Any other question? Any other question? You can call in on 620586. Uh, our brother are calling now. If you still have more questions, you can still call in because I just I don't want us to just have plenty, plenty question on board. That's why I just said let me just treat that one so that we can still so 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 that it can be clear. If the other one is clear, please, you can still just thump up. If you still have other questions, other person too can call. Anybody can call. We are still live. We are still, we are, the lecture is still going. We are still live. Please, if you're joining us, please type to thump up. There's a button. There's a like button. There's a like button. Like, subscribe. Please don't watch our video without subscribing. Learn to like. Please, let's learn to like. Let's learn to like. Please, if you've not liked, please like. Like, like. Learn to like. Please, there's a like button here under, under the video. Please just put the thumb up and like. Like the button. Like the button, please. It's very, very important for you to like the button. Like the button. Help us to like. Help us to, help us to thumb up. Thumb up. Like. Like there's a like button. Apart from the like chats, the chat you're, 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 you're sending, you know, the chat, the chat is you're telling me, communicating with me that you're getting what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm teaching. But the, the, the video, the video has a live, a, li a, a chat. A, a kind of button which you have to like. Like it, please. Is that what's like? So, any other question from anybody? Any other question? 
Any question? Any question? Any question? We are still live. Any question? Any question? Anything you want me to explain? Anything you want me to explain? I'm still here. Anything you want me to explain? Please, anything you want me to explain? Remember that I always tell people that uh, don't don't be discouraged. Don't pay anyone to go and do exam for you. Don't be discouraged. Don't pay anyone to go and do exam for you. The risk is very high. You can lose. You will even lose your wrestling if the person is caught. Sorry. Let me begin. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Please, uh, I'm the, uh, I still want you to go back to test one for the same book, sir. Test what? One. Test one. Very good. Yeah. Test yeah. one of the same book. Uh, yeah. What number? Number Number one. Number one. Number number eight. Number eight. Number nineteen. Number nineteen. Number three. Number three. Then eleven. Number eleven. Then number five. Number five. Number twenty-five and uh, twenty-nine. Twenty-five and twenty-nine. Uh, let me just take let me just take them and we'll, I come back to you if you still have another question. See, sir. Okay, thank you. Thanks, yeah, sir. Thank okay, you. Okay. Please remember that every student has this. So when we're treating Friday like this on YouTube, it's better you come with everything on board with me. And you know, it's I told you that we must use all the material I am giving to you uh, to pass. So the person who is asking this question knows what because it means that he's studying is making serious studying with it don't ignore don't ignore now let me take test one is actually about test one test one test one number one test one number one says what should you do if you are stopped inside a tunnel due to traffic for a period a, a period longer than two minutes a period longer than two minutes what must you do a period longer than two minutes, you should know that you have to turn your hazard warning lights. You keep the position light on and you turn off the engine because it's more than two minutes. When it's more than two minutes, you must off the engine in the tunnel. You must put the hazard warning light, which danger, emergency, and you have to turn on the position light. The reason because inside the tunnel, you know, there's enough light, but you must turn on the position light. That is why the B becomes the better answer here. Number number five, number five of it. Let me just number five. Number five says, as a general rule, where should a child less than 135 centimeter tall be seated in a car? Be seated in a car less than 135. That child, for safety, as a general, general law, that child should sit at the back, at the middle with the seat restraint system. According to their heights and weights, why do they say back? Because when you stay at the back, at the center, the impartation of accident during accident will not affect that child. You understand me? In a place where there's no chance at the back, that is when that child can come to the front seat with that situation system. One thing you need to know again is that the situation system is very important for any child that's less than 135 centimeter. You understand me? Less than 135 centimeter must have that seat restraint system. Good. Number number three of that place. Number three, you ask for number three also. Number three says poor ventilation of the interior and it dash dash dash. It favor the onset of fatigue. Favor it means that onset means that beginning. It helps the beginning of fatigue. Fatigue means tiredness. So when you have a poor ventilation, you just wind up. You are not even having here coming in. You don't know how to see. You don't you don't wind down, you get you get tired. So it increases, it helps the onset, the beginning of fatigue, the beginning of tiredness. That is that is a number three. Number number eight. Number eight. Number eight says, sorry. Number eight says, does the use of indicator contribute to reducing accidents? Yes. Indicator when you indicate your intention, 
it will reduce the accident because you are telling somebody that I want to go to the left or I want to go to the right. So the person will know is that weird that you want to go to the left. So you are reducing the probability of having an accident. That's the purpose of it. The purpose of indicator is to reduce, is to give awareness to other people that you are coming to left or to right. Number, number 11. Number 11. Number 11 here says, number 11 says, this sign indicates the distance. Look at the sign. The sign here. It said it indicates the distance to where the mandatory stop in the next intersection because stop is under giveaway. That triangle red that faces down means giveaway. So there's a stop under it. So it means that I have to respect stop in that junction. There's a mandatory of stop in that junction because any place you see stop and you see giveaway, I obey stop first because there's a reason why they ask me to stop in that area because of the danger present in that in that place. So the answer will be to wear the mandatory stop in the next exit or next intersection. So number number 19. Number 19. Number 19. Sorry, I'm trying to run it a little bit faster so that we can number 19. Number 19. Number 19 says the order of priority among this type of sign is order of priority. This question always comes in exam so much. That's why I said it when I was teaching sign that you must understand the order of priority among the five signs. Now, order of priority among this is uh, one in light, vertical sign, and road marking, which you see. If you look at the C, the C say one in light, number two. Vertical sign, number four. And road marking, number five. So, the order of priority is better among that number C. Number, so ask for number 25. Number 25. Number 25 of that say, what are the symptoms of stress while driving? The symptoms of stress while driving is that it will increase your aggressiveness. You will notice increased in aggressiveness. You are stressed. You just be shouting on people in the car. You're stressed because you want to get home and rest. So that is the better answer in that area. Number 29, number 29, number 29 of that same test one says, this sign, one danger of proximity, 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 very good, very good. Look at this sign, look at this sign, the sign, the sign. One danger of proximity, the answer is not there. There's a typographical error in that area, which is on evil surface. You understand me? You understand me? Road with an evil surface. So the answer is not there. It's just road on evil of, with an evil surface. Number, you asking them number 18 also. Number 18. Sorry. Number 18 of that place. Number 18 says, sorry. Sorry, I'm, I just picked new book, so the, the page is gone. <laughs> number 18. Number 18 says, the primary cause of accident by reaching is the primary cause of accidents by reaching is a maintaining speed above 100 km per hour. No. Two, not keeping a safety distance with the vehicle in the front. That's the better answer. And abnormal speed, no. Abnormal slow speed is very wrong. Abnormal, abnormal speed means that the speed that is not. The speed that is that is lesser than the minimum speed. So it's not safe on the highway when you are doing the lesser speed. Abnormal speed is abnormal. The only place where abnormal speed is permitted is through meteorological condition or environmental problem. Are you getting me? So that is it. So try to understand something in exam also. When you are given a question, the, there are three objectives. The three objectives, one is totally wrong. First of all, remove the one that is wrong. Now contest the two that seems right. And out of the two that seems right, one will be better. Remember that anytime you go to exam, when you have 30 questions, you start with number one, and number one is not clear. It's not by force you should do it. Leave it, go and do number two. Number two is not clear. Leave it, go and do number three. When you try to do the rest, coming back to it might give you a clear picture already. Don't, by force, don't watch time for yourself. You will finish the 30 minutes the 30 question in 30 minutes. Don't bother to give yourself stress. 
when you come back, just make sure that you go through it and you do it. And again, now, because of this, uh, this COVID-19 stuff, anytime you are going to the exam, try to go with your nose, face mask and glove. Without glove, you cannot do exam. Many students forget that. Like today, some students went to exam and without glove, they didn't allow them to enter the exam hall. Without glove, the guantes, with Spanish is, you can't do exam. So keep your guantes, keep your black biro, your original residence, and your face marks. It's very, very important when you are going to the exam because without that, you might not be able and you might lose the, the seating which you have that time. So I think we had a nice time today. We've run almost one half plus. So uh, every Friday like this, we come live on for students, only for students. But if we share with people, it's not bad. Just for us to be able to, right? If we have anyone with any question again before we call it a day, but I advise you, try use nice material. Believe in yourself that you can do it. It is possible. If people are passing, it is possible. I want to make an history this year by giving out at more than what I've been doing yearly. And it's, it's, it's clicked already. And I'm still having more. It's still counting. It's still counting. There are people that are still going to pass next week. People that are still going to pass next week. Why? What is the secret? The secret is this. When you use the right material, you are able to ask question. There's no question that is foolish. Ask question. If you're my student and you're my platform on WhatsApp, drop your question. I'm going to answer. If I forget to answer you, call back. You pay me. You pay me. You, you employ my service to make you pass. You paid me. Use me. You paid me. I don't want to take your money without making you to pass. I don't want. Use me. Send your question and let me do it. And for those people that has that has picked the exam, please uh, try to inbox me. Inbox me and let me know the dates you have exam. Because uh, from, to, from tomorrow, I'm going to be posting some tests on our, on our platform, which I'll be posting the answer, which uh, when they are not clear, please manage it. Let's, let's, next week, let's rush test so that it will be, it will be, it will be better for those that. So, so if I know you are having exams so, so time, I'll be able to even have a personal chat with you in order to see if I can assist with more tests for you. So please, don't ignore any material. Don't ignore any material that I give to you. All materials are very, very important. The manual, I'm running it. The driving theory test, very nice. The mobile test, which I gave to you on your mobile phone, very, very important. Run them. If you have a hero, please send it to us on the WhatsApp group. Or you call me direct or send me a message. You want to have a chat with me. And sometimes, if any student like to have a live video like this with me on Instagram, it will be on Instagram so that we can have face-to-face -face video. Let me know. Inbox me directly, privately, or you write on this class page. Teacher, I want to have a kind of video interaction with you like this. We have to do it on Instagram, my Instagram page. I'll take you to Instagram. We have a live video just to chat together. And we explain some things. I give it open for as many students that will, 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 will appreciate that. So, so tonight, I'm still encouraging you. It is possible when you make it possible. It is possible. If somebody who cannot read and write very well can do it, you that can read and write, you have a challenge. The game, the ball is in your courts. Choose if you are to pass and choose if you are to just carry it over to next year. But I will never allow you to carry it over to next year. That is why I'm available. That is why you pay me to be your tutor online. And I remain your tutor. I'm always serious with what I'm doing. And I want you to pass. And I appreciate you so much. I remain Steve Adetela, your professor online. Thank you very much for joining us.